Hi, good day. This is Miss LM and we're back again for another math video and today we're going to talk about geometry. And in this video, we're going to learn different terms that will help us know more about this topic, okay? So, what is geometry? Geometry comes from the two Greek words, geo means earth and metron, which means measure. It is a branch of mathematics dealing with spatial relationship. It is concerned with shapes, sizes, relative position of figures, and the properties of space. That is why familiar na tayo sa term na to. Na kapag narinig natin yung geometry, ang ilan sa mga pumapasok sa isip natin is the shapes, the figures, the perimeter, the area, and yun po mismo yung geometry. Saan nga ba nag-umpisa ang geometry? So, geometry was extremely important to ancient societies and was used for surveying, astronomy, navigation, and building. Geometry, as we know, it is actually known as Euclidean geometry, which was written well over 2,000 years ago in ancient Greece by Euclid, Pythagoras, Thales, Plato, and Aristotle, just to mention a few. So, ancient Greece pa lang, 2,000 years ago, na buo na itong geometry. So, sa tulong ng mga kilalang tao kung saan sila yung nag-contribute para mabuo kung ano ang geometry sa ngayon. So, the most fascinating and accurate geometry text was written by Euclid and was called Elements. So, Euclid's text has been used for over 2,000 years. Si Euclid yung nakapag-summarize ng mga na-discover ng mga kilalang tao noon. So, like Pythagoras, Thales, Plato, and Aristotle, syempre, may contribution din naman si Euclid. And yung contribution niyang yon ay binuo niya sa libro niya na The Elements. Egyptian surveyors used geometry at least 5,000 years ago in reestablishing land boundaries obliterated by annual flooding of Nile River. So, even the Egyptian surveyor know how to use geometry 5,000 years ago. As early as 2000 BC, the Babylonians were already familiar with the ways of determining the area of some figures such as rectangles and triangles. So, imagine 2000 BC, ang mga Babylonians marunong nang kumuha ng area ng figures such as rectangles and triangles. Kung ano man yung pamamaraan noon, alam natin na nagawa na ng paraan para mas may apply natin sa panahon ngayon. And today, engineers and architects use geometry together with other mathematics in their work. So, geometry now is a part of what we need to learn para mas may apply natin to into real world. So, to know more about geometry, let us have the mathematical system. It consists of four important terms na kailangan nating matutunan pa. So, first is the undefined terms. In geometry, we come across with terms which cannot be precisely defined. So, from the word itself, undefined, so wala siyang definition, pero pwede natin siyang i-describe. At dito po nag-umpisa ang lahat. From here, nagkaroon ng defined terms. And these terms have a formal definition. So, may definition na siya at nakakatulong pa sa pag-define ng other terms or other words. Next is the axioms or postulates. So, these are statements which are accepted as true even without proof. So, ito naman ay ang mga sentences or statements na ginagamit natin to prove something and hindi na natin siya kailang i-prove pa. Accepted na agad siya. Then, the last one is the theorems. These statements can be proven. Once a theorem is proven, it can also be used as a reason in proving other statements. So, ang pinagkaiba ng theorems sa axioms or postulates is that ang theorems kailangan mo nang i-prove bago magamit to prove other statements. Okay? So, ang axioms, direkta na agad. Pwede natin gamitin yan to prove something. While the theorems, kailangan mo natin siyang i-prove bago pa natin siya magamit sa iba. Okay? So, in this video, we're going to focus only on undefined terms. So, aalamin natin kung ano-ano nga ba itong mga undefined terms na ito at ano siya sa paligid natin. So, let's now have the undefined terms in geometry part 1. Okay? So, this is just the first part of the undefined terms. So, ano-ano nga ba ang undefined terms? Before that, I have this question for you. Have you read the Bible? According to Genesis chapter 3, verse 19, For dust you are, and to dust you will return. 
So, I know familiar na kayo dito sa Bible verse na ito na tayo, lahat ay nagmula lang sa alabok at doon din tayo babalik. Another Bible verse is the Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 7. And the dust returns to the earth as it was, and the Spirit returns to God who gave it. So, yung ating katawang lupa, babalik yan sa pagiging dust, pagiging alabok, pero yung ating spirit ay aakyat muli sa piling ni God. Kaya, ibig sabihin nito, ngayon pa lang, habang nandito tayo sa mundong ibabaw, gawin na natin yung mga tama at dapat natin gawin nang sa ganun, masigurado natin na yung spirit natin is babalik muli patungo kay God. Okay? Another question is that, what is the universe made of? So, yan yung familiar tayo, ano, yung nasa outer space. So, the universe is made up of particles and stardust and we are part of it. Tandaan, nandun tayo. Small particles na yun, parte tayo ng universe na yun. Okay? Now, through those three questions and this activity, two picks, one word, we're going to identify the undefined terms. So, meron tayo ditong first undefined term. Using this two picture, ano kaya itong undefined term na ito? So, this is the point. Then, for the second undefined term, we have four letters. Using these pictures, the second undefined term is the line. And the last undefined term is, meron tayong airplane, meron tayong different shapes, and five letters siya. At yun po ay plane. So, the three undefined terms in geometry na pinagmula ng lahat ay ang point, line, and plane. So, now, we're going to describe these three undefined terms. Again, we have points, lines, and planes. So, dito pa lang, makikita na natin kung paano nga ba nabuo itong tatlong undefined terms na to. Points has no length, no width, or thickness. So, wala lahat yan. Isang tuldok lang talaga yan. Ano po? And dito sa screen natin, meron tayong iba't ibang points dyan. Yun nga lang, hindi pa natin siya napapangalanan. Now, for the lines, we have this description. It has length but no width and no thickness. So, may haba na. Pero wala daw tong width at thickness. Then, for the planes, it has infinite length and width but no thickness. So, these are the three undefined terms. And let us know more about these undefined terms. First is the point. So, it is denoted by a dot. And itong dot na to, familiar tayo dito. Yung ating isang descriptive sentence, nag-i-end sa dot. Or dot din yung ginagamit natin sa ating multiplication symbol. Like 20m multiplied by 3m, that is 60m squared. And also, yung dot yung ginagamit natin as separator sa ating decimal value and sa ating whole number. That is why familiar na tayo sa point or sa dot na yan. It is also used to represent specific location in space. So, kung natatandaan nyo po sa atin pong rectangular coordinate system, ano ba yung ginagamit natin para malam natin yung specific location? So, maliban doon sa Cartesian plane, nandun yung point kung saan inaalam natin kung ano or saan siya nakaposition. So, that is why ito tayo nag-umpisa sa points. So, we use this dot to represent a point and named using capital letter. And I know familiar na tayo dito kasi nagawa na natin to before sa ating Cartesian plane. So, we have point A, point B, point D, point C. So, yung dot na yun, hindi pwedeng mawala when it comes to representing or naming a point. Again, we use capital letter kapag points ang pinag-uusapan and dapat may dot siya dun sa unahan. Now, ano nga ba ang mga pictorial representation ng points or yung points na nasa paligid natin? Okay? So, first example is the tip of the pen. So, yung pinaka dulo ng mga ball pen natin, yan po ay example ng isang point. Another is corner of a book. So, when we read the word corner, yun po yung pinaka sulok, again, that represents a point. Another is the location on a map. Again, point po yung ating ginagamit dito. And the last is coordinates. So, I know familiar na kayo dito sa ating coordinates of a point. Meron tayong x coordinate and y coordinate. And marami pa po sa paligid natin ang pwede nating kakitaan ng points. So, you can think about it para later on sa ating activity malaman nyo kung ito nga bang bagay na ito ay isang point, isang line or isang plane. Okay? Next is a line. 
Sabi nga po dito, it has length but no width and no thickness. So, it is a set of points extended endlessly in two opposite direction. Extended endlessly. So, hindi lang dalawang point, kundi mas marami pang point ang bumubuo ng isang line. So, yan po ay may maraming point dyan. Yun nga lang, nagkataon na meron tayong two distinct points. Point A and point B. So, it can be named using two different capital letters representing two different points on the line. So, dito sa ating unang line, mapapangalan na natin ang line na to using these two points. So, yung pangalan ng line na to is line AB. While in this example, since meron tayong three distinct points, meron tayong iba't ibang name on this line na pwedeng gamitin. But, Again, even though iba't ibang pangalan yun, maibigay natin dito sa line na to, iisang line lang ang tinutukay nito. So, ano po yun? We have line AB or line BA. Again, it extends endlessly in two opposite direction. And yun po ang ating symbol for line ay yung ating double-headed arrow sa ibabaw ng dalawang capital letter. At ang capital letter na to ay yung ating dalawang point. So, A, B, and B, A, the same lang yan. A, C, and C, A. So, ito po yun. That represents this line. And another is line B, C, or line C, B. So, itong mga to isa lang naman ang tinutukoy niyan. Ito po yan. Pero dahil nga po meron tayong tatlong distinct points sa line na to, nagkaroon tayo ng iba't ibang result ng name ng line natin na to. Again, huwag kakalimutan yung symbol ng line. Okay? So, another way is kapag meron tayong cursive or mas maliit na letter dun sa ating line, sa katabi ng line. So, pwede nating sabihin na yan ay si line M. Okay? Pag nagkataon lang po na meron tayong maliit na cursive letter dun sa ating line. Pero kung wala at meron tayong at least two points, makakapagpangalan pa rin tayo ng line. Again, tandaan po ang palatandaan natin sa line is it extend endlessly in two opposite directions. So, dapat ay may arrowhead. Kaya pag pinangalanan natin, kailangan yun na sa ibabaw ng dalawang capital letters ay may arrowhead din. So, now, what are the pictorial representation of lines? So, ano nga ba yung mga lines na nasa paligid natin? Example is the cable on a cable cart. Another is the edge of a book. Kung kanina, corner of a book, ngayon po ay edge of the book. So, pag sinabi edge, yan po yung gilid na yan. So, line po ang nagre-represent nung edge na yun. Another is the string of a guitar. Yan. So, that also represents a line. Alam ko po, marami pa dyan. Tingin-tingin lang kayo sa paligid nyo. May makikita pa kayong another representation of a line. Okay, let's proceed to our third undefined term, and that is the planes. So, kung yung line ay binubuo ng maraming point, itong plane ay binubuo ng maraming line. Okay, so planes has infinite length and width but no thickness. So, it is a two-dimensional flat surface. Ayan, malinaw po two-dimensional flat surface. Alin yung dalawang dimension na yun? Length and width lamang. And it is made up of points that extends indefinitely in all directions. Siyempre, dahil ang line ay binubuo ng point, so malamang marami po itong point. So endlessly, ibig sabihin, yung mga lines natin na yan ay extended in two opposite directions. So kadalasan po ang representation natin ng plane ay isang parallelogram. And, meron tayong points sa loob ng ating plane para mapangalanan natin yung plane natin. For this example, meron tayong 3 points inside the plane. So, pwede natin ipangalan sa kanya yung tatlong points na yan. Or, meron po tayo kadalasan na one letter at the corner of this plane para ipangalan din sa kanya. So, kapag ganito po, we can name this plane as plane P. Ayan, plane P or plane ABC. So, pwede rin siyang BCA, CAV, ayan. Pwede pong yung tatlong points na yun. So, basta po meron tayong three distinct points on a plane, makakapag-name tayo or meron tayong plane na mabubuo. Again, at least three points, we are going to have a plane. Okay? What are the pictorial representation of plane in a real life? First is top of the table. So, malinaw naman na yan ay isang plane. Another is the whiteboard or yung ating blackboard. And, syempre, yung ATM card. Maliit nga lang yan. Pero, again, it is a pictorial representation of plane. Again, lingon-lingon lang kayo sa paligid nyo kasi marami pa po tayong plane na makikita dyan. 
Now, let us determine the real-life examples of undefined terms. So, maliban dun sa mga nauna ko nang ipinakita, meron pa tayo dito. Iba pa. So, let's try this one. Determine whether each of the following suggests a point, a line, or a plane. So, you can pause this video for a while para isulat kung ang mga sumusunod nga ba ay point, line, or plane. Okay? So, pause nyo muna bago po natin sabihin yung sagot. Sagotan nyo muna bago natin tignan kung tama po yung inyong sagot. Okay? So, bamboo strip of a fence. Bamboo strip. So, yan po ay isang line. Okay? Next, the corner of a box. Again, pag sinabing corner, yung pinaka-pinaka-sulok. So, this is a point. One string of a guitar. So, nabanggit na to kanina. String of a guitar. String is a line. Sand on a beach. Ayan. So, madami yan. Pero madiliit yan. Di po ba? That is a point. Screen of an iPad. Screen from the word itself. Screen. So, this is a pictorial representation of a plane. Okay? Another items. Item 6 to 10. Again, you can pause this video for a while. Write your answer on your notebook. And after you finish, you can play the video again for the answers. Okay? So, door. This is a plane. How about the marble? This is a point. Mole. Ano ba yung mole? Yung mga taling, di po ba? So, it is a pictorial representation of a point. A page of a book. So, yung isang pahina daw ng isang libro. So, this is a plane. Then, the last item, curtain rod. Sabitan ng ating cortina. That is a representation of a line. That's our topic for this video, the point, line, and plane, or the undefined terms. So, tandaan lamang, points has no length, no width, and no thickness. While the lines, meron na siyang length, pero wala pa rin siyang width and thickness. For the planes, it has infinite length and width but no thickness. So, two-dimensional lang. And again, undefined terms is the starting point of geometry. So, sila yung pinakaumpisa ng lahat at dyan iikot yung mga susunod pa nating topic. Okay? So, wag kalimutan, points, lines, and planes are the three undefined terms at lahat tayo ay nag-umpisa lang sa points. Okay? Sa dust. At dun din po tayo babalik. So, this is just the first part of the undefined terms. I hope you learned something from this video. Huwag kalimutang mag-subscribe, mag-like, mag-comment kung ano ang mga tanong at ang mga natutunan sa video na to. Keep safe everyone. Bye-bye!